doxing a man because you took exception to something he said in a speech that was not addressed to you is just about one of the lowest things you could do as a human being. And to get this from a public account, that just goes to show how worrisome the woke rot in the system has become. So, Kansas City doxed Harrison Botka because of a commencement speech he gave at a Catholic college that has now broken the internet and has everyone losing their minds. Now, do I think Harrison Botka is completely in the right for this speech? No, and I will get to that, break down the speech and give my full thoughts on it, but we're doing this video in reverse. So first, let's take a look at this irrational backlash, starting from the doxing situation. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, so you don't miss another episode of a Nigerian Take With Steel. And whilst you're at it, please like and share this video. So, they doxed him in a tweet. Just a reminder that Harrison Bodka lives in the city of Lee's Summit. <laughs> the audacity it must have taken for someone to tweet this without any fear of losing their job, just because they are not in agreement with something a man said. Turns out the United States is the land of the free until you exercise that freedom by expressing yourself religiously or saying something crazy woke leftists do not agree with. Inappropriate is not even a good enough word to describe just how disgusting this is. And turns out people shared my view on that because there was quite some backlash on that tweet so much so that they deleted it within two hours of tweeting it. And part of that backlash came from the Attorney General of the state, who threatened Kansas City with legal action for putting out that tweet. But unsurprisingly, some people could still come out and defend such disgusting behavior, including the mayor of Kansas City, coming to say that the Attorney General is promoting violence and harassment against female workers in the city right to try to emotionally blackmail and flip the script to make it look like you did something wrong for calling out bad behavior and speaking against it and making a strong stance against it is the classical manipulative play but that aside they deleted it after and said we apologize for our previous tweet it was oh sorry sorry <laughs> i'm too literate apparently we apologize for our previous tweet, it was shared in error. Right, okay. You buy that? No. So apart from this doxing, people have been reacting online, making videos about it, expressing outrage, and feminists are out with their pitchforks to criticize another man and get him cancelled. They even started a petition on change.org, which has now got some signatures to get the Kansas City Chiefs to sack this man, to dismiss this man because of a speech he made in a Catholic college to Catholic students that share a similar point of view with him. He's pretty much preaching to the choir at that point, so why are you so bothered about his views and his opinions? But again, like I said, we're going to get to that speech, but we're doing it in reverse. Somebody said, Harrison Bodka is a giant piece of misogynistic shit. Telling these graduates to get in the kitchen and push out babies shows just how much he disrespects women. This is a disgusting take. Uh, he never said they should get in the kitchen. I don't even think he mentioned the kitchen once. I don't think he mentioned cooking once. So what the hell are you talking about? This one says, NFL kicker Harrison Bodka doing a graduation speech at a girls' college and tells them that the four years they just spent learning were pointless because they should be most excited about getting in the kitchen. What a misogynistic homo... Homophobic? <laughs> oh, come on. What does homophobia have to do with this? These people don't listen. Did you even watch the speech? Anyway, <laughs> moving on. The Chiefs need to fire him. Not good representation for that team. How was he not booed off the stage? I'll tell you how he wasn't booed off the stage. Stay with me. Who told him this was okay to say? It is okay to say. And of course, the videos calling him out for being a misogynist. <laughs> have a look. For the ladies present today. I really went in and told these women who have spent tens of thousands of dollars and countless hours getting their degrees that those degrees ain't shit and that they need to just wife up and push babies out. This man is a professional football player. He can afford to have his wife stay at home and not work. Going to a college class and telling them that, really, it was diabolical what was done to you. You've been bamboozled. You shouldn't have gotten this degree. 
Like, does the college not understand that if you're telling people they shouldn't enroll and they should just wife up, that they're going to lose money? And the reason we are seeing birth rates decline is because most people can't afford to fucking live, let alone live on one income. Because most people aren't married to professional football players. The caption says NFL kicker Harrison Botka telling the women graduating that their degrees were a waste of time. He did not say that. And uh, she does make a good point when she talks about people not being able to afford a one income household. Yeah, it is a good point, but it's not a good point that fits in this situation because again, he never said people should not pursue their careers. So this is a huge leap from what he said. So this is like backlash from people that were not there, you know, people on the internet. But I saw this particular video from a person that was present at the event and she has something to say about it. So let's take a look. All right. Well, since I have about 200 of y'all congratulating me and asking me what the fuck I was thinking during this speech, I thought I'd respond. Um, yeah, it was fucking horrible. <laughs> um, some of us did boo. Me and my roommate definitely did. Um, there was a standing ovation from everyone in the room, except from me, my roommate, and about 10 to 15 other women. Um, you also have to keep in mind, this was at a Catholic and conservative college. So, a lot of the men were like, yeah, <laughs> they were excited, but it was, it was horrible. Most of the women were looking back and forth at each other like what the fuck is going on like did he just come here to speak about politics and his views on women that's all you got for a graduation commencement speech are you kidding but yeah it was horrible it, it feels like she's just you know playing to the tune of the internet this fight against the family unit is real because the amount of brainwashing that needs to exist in a society for that kind of speech to spark an outrage is just oof, top tier. But what I can see here basically is people throwing around words like misogyny. And all I can think about is how you guys in the West have it so good <laughs> That you don't even know what the meaning of words are anymore. I'll tell you what misogyny is. Misogyny is the speaker of a community funding or contributing significantly to the marrying off. Yes, you heard that right. Marrying off of 100 orphans whose ages were not too sure. Well, this information was not released. So we don't know if they are even over 18. And based on the track record of that region, in my country, I am not inclined <laughs> to give them the benefit of the doubt that those girls are not underage, if you know what I mean. That is 100 orphans, whom, by the way, are not that educated. So rather than the empowerment and education of the girls, the choice, the best option is to marry them off to men so that they can be dependent on a man's whims, whether or not that person is going to treat them well. And someone in public office is contributing to that madness. Now that, that is misogyny, okay? Not someone at a commencement speech of graduates telling them, okay, this is what leads to happiness ultimately. And as you focus on your careers, also consider family. That is not misogyny. Now, I want to get into two aspects of Harrison Bodker's speech. The first one being... For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Okay, let me stop here and touch on this a little. Now I can see where there might be some outrage because of the setting. It's a graduation ceremony and these ladies are graduating. And people think, oh, this is not the place or time. I got comments like that from my short video talking about how this is not the place or time to talk about th those things. But let me ask you a question. Where is the place and time to talk about those things? Where is the place and time to talk about those things? At home? No? 
because people are not doing that. Now, to put all that in context, you have to realize that when he talks about diabolical lies being told to you, he's talking about the efforts of the media and the efforts of feminists brainwashing women with very silly ideologies and then women having to regret that later in life. Now, these women are in the crossroads of their life and they need to hear this, believe it or not. Fine, you can say, okay, maybe that's not the place, but I, I don't share that sentiment. I believe that is absolutely the place to do that. And this is somewhere where radicals who are trying to tell women to abandon the family and be individualistic are also preaching the same things. So why should he not promote family values on the same stage when given the opportunity? The reason why he would even be bringing this up at a graduation ceremony is because everything else is trying so hard to tell women otherwise, even when we can visibly see the results, uh, misery, sadness, depression, and so on and so forth. Also, a lot of what he's been accused of, he never said. I didn't hear the word kitchen once. Did you hear the word kitchen? This is the second time in a short period that I've seen this feministic outrage about something so ridiculous. The first was the Simone Biles thing where they were calling for the Simone Biles to divorce her husband. It is absolutely ridiculous. And it says a lot about Western society. It says a lot about Western women. If things like this are so triggering that you would wish to ruin a man's life, if things like this are triggering at all, it should not even be controversial. Like, what the hell did he say? I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, Homemaker. Homemaker. Why does that word trigger people so much? It's very, very important. You know what I find funny? The people that claim to empower women and want the best for women are also the ones that seem to be putting some of the most important things that women do down as unimportant. So if you didn't have a mom, well, I'm talking from a Nigerian point of view now, if I didn't have a mom, doing what a mom does and I didn't have a dad doing what a dad does, what the hell sort of person would I be today? I'll tell you, a green-haired feminist on the internet that knows nothing about nothing and just speaks without any sense. And that is, in fact, what you're seeing in Western society today. They lack discernment, they lack understanding, it's all a fight to them. A man expressing himself is misogynistic. So you can see the difference in societies. The society that has a stronger family unit you can see how that's going. And the society that has managed to tear that down over the last couple of years, you can see how that's going just based on social media alone. To the gentlemen here today, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you that men are not necessary in the home or in our communities. Mm. As men, we set the tone of the culture. And when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see all around the nation. Mm. Other countries do not have nearly the same absentee father rates as we find here in the U.S., and a correlation could be made in their drastically lower violence rates as well. Mm. Be unapologetic in your masculinity, fighting against the cultural emasculation of men. Do hard things. Never settle for what is easy. You might have a talent that you don't necessarily enjoy, but if it glorifies God, Maybe you should lean into that over something that you might think suits you better. That is a healthy message for men, and that's that. He has not lied. That's not a lie. You guys have like a fatherlessness pandemic, and we can all see the effects of that. These are things that are already known, you know, that they have a correlation. But this acting brand new on social media and acting like the world must pander to your bubble of stupidity is just so silly. Anyway. Those are my thoughts on the speech. He's right. He has said nothing wrong. And this backlash is utterly ridiculous. My name is Dio. And thank you for watching. So, Kansas City doxed Harrison Bokta. 
Potka. So Kansas City Dogs Tarisin Bok Potka. Botka. 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 So Kansas City Dogs Tarisin Botka.